Good day. Welcome to All About Vision. I'm your host, Dr. Raul Henson. This is a very special episode because this is our very first one here in Pet TV of All About Vision, your IT and more. Today's episode deals with the fundamentals of our vision, its parts and functions. We'll discuss the amazing inner workings of the human eye. And this is the show that examines the window of the soul, our eyes. You are watching All About Vision, your ITV and more. Eye, Ear, and Nose Throat Center located at 066 MacArthur Highway, Angela City. You can contact them at 045-888-0411 or 45 Day to our televiewers, I am your ophthalmologist and host, Dr. Raul Hanson. We are at the Clinica Hanson Eye, Ear, Nose, and Throat Medical Center in Angeles City. Our very first episode today explains the organ that gives us the sense of sight, the human eye. We use our eyes in almost everything we do, whether you're working, reading, watching your favorite show on television like All About Vision, using a computer, driving a car, and many other activities. Sight is the most precious of the five senses, and many people fear blindness more than any other disability. Vision is all about light reflection. The eye enables us to see and interpret the shapes, colors, and dimensions of objects in the world by processing the light they reflect or give off. The eye changes light rays into electrical signals that sends them to the brain, which interprets these electrical signals as visual images. The human eye is set in a protective cone-shaped cavity in the skull, called the orbit or the socket, and measures approximately one inch in diameter. The orbit is surrounded by layers of soft fatty tissue which protect the eye and enable it to turn easily. Six muscles, which will I'll explain later, regulate the motion of the eye. Among the more important parts of the human eye, inside the eye, I mean, are the iris, cornea, your lens, retina, conjunctiva, the macula, and the optic nerve. When we return, we will provide you a comprehensive discussion on the, how the eye works. Keep watching All About Vision, your ITV and more. Eye, Ear, and Nose Throat Center located at 066 MacArthur Highway, Angela City. You can contact them at 045-888-0411 or 45 Welcome back to our show, All About Vision. I'm your host, Dr. Raul Henson. Well, our topic for today, since it's our very first episode in PEP TV, is how the eye works. Of course, before we go to the other episodes on, how, on the diseases of the eye and the, the, the treatment of the other eye diseases, we have to explain first how the eye works because you can only know the disease if you know the normal. Like in med school, 
when our teachers tell us before you go to the diseases, you have to know first the normal. Because if you don't know the normal, and then you don't know how to diagnose and treat the diseases and to even know which diseases are these. So today, I'm going to explain about how the eye works. I'll explain you as the basic anatomy of the eye and inside the eye. In our second part, we will explain how the eye works uh, inside the eye. So we will start first with two dis uh, our discussions are, are the external eye and the internal eye. So that means outside the eye and inside the eye. So our first part of this, of this episode will be uh, dwelling on the external or the outside part of the eye. So what does the outside part of the eye include? Okay. So first, the, really, the real outside parts of the eye are the eyelids, the eyebrows, the eyelashes, our tears, okay? The tear duct and the eye muscles are called external part of the eye, but actually they're just inside, inside the orbit. They're not actually inside the eye, so that's why I included them in the external eye, okay? So our next slide. Now, this is a very important slide. This already explains the external eye and the anatomy, and I will also explain to you the physiology or how this thing works, okay? First of all, this is the eye, okay? This is your eyebrow. These are your eyelashes. This is your eyeball, which is I'm going to discuss on the second part. This area right here in dotted lines is called the lacrimal gland. Okay? We'll go back to that later. And then you also have your tear duct. Okay? And the tear duct goes out, I mean, the, the, the tear duct goes to the extent inside the nose. Okay? I will explain now in detail. Okay? So first of all, uh, what are the, what's the purpose of all these parts? Of, of course, God gave us all these parts because they have function, okay? The eyebrow is there for us to, to protect actually our eye from direct sunlight because our eyebrow is actually protruding, okay? Our eyebrow is protruding from the eye here. So the, it actually protects it from severe or the sunlight, the eyebrows. Okay, and then the eyelids is also important. Why are the eyelids important? Could you imagine if you don't have an eyelid? Okay, if you don't have an eyelid, your eye will basically dry up because the eyelids is the one that really closes the eye and distributes the tears. Okay, because remember we have tears, uh, we, you know, the eye manufactures tears through the lacrimal gland here. So the lacrimal glands manufacture tears and some other glands around the eye. So basically, we are uh, making a lot of tears every day. We just don't even know it. So it lubricates our eye. Lubrication is important because if, it's not, if the eye is not well lubricated, it will dry up and it cause blurred vision and infection. So the eyelids are very important to distribute the tears that are manufactured by the lacrimal gland. And then, so what happens to the tears that have been Okay, uh, from, the, from the eyelid, they get dirty, they, they accumulate dirt. So what happens to these tears? I mean, so basically, these tears go to the tear duct. This tear duct is also very important. Why? Because if the tear duct is not functioning well, what will happen to our tears? So our tears will overflow. So we call that tearing or, you know, um, uh, epiphora in, in medical terms. So when you're tearing, one cause could be a non-functioning tear duct. Okay? So when there's a non-functioning tear duct, it could be a blocked tear duct, meaning it's obstructed. It could be a problem because, you know, our eyelid closure also helps in the transfer of tears from our eyes to the tear duct. So if there's a problem with blinking, like for example, you have Bell's palsy. Remember, we have patients, we have Bell's palsy. They cannot even, they, they cannot move their half of their face. So they cannot actually 
squeeze their eye. So they will also have tearing because it's a functional problem. So the function of the eyelids affects the drainage of tears inside the tear duct. Okay, so uh, have you experienced it before? You, uh, you place an eye drop in your eye and then after a few minutes you could taste, you could taste the eye drop in your mouth. Well, that's normal. So that's not an abnormal phenomenon. Why? Because if you place the tear, if you place the eye drops in your eye, basically it will go with the with the tears, the natural tears of the of the eye, and then it will go to the natural path of drainage inside the nose, and then goes to our mouth. So when you when you taste something after placing an eye drop, don't be alarmed. That's that's actually normal. I will be more alarmed and concerned if you didn't taste it at all. So, uh, the tear duct is very, very important. You know, most people don't even know that we have a tear duct because it's inside the eye. All we can see is the eyelashes, the eyebrows, um, the, the, the eyelids, okay? We cannot even see the lacrimal gland because it's, it's inside the, the orbit, okay? Now, what are eyelashes for? Remember, we have eyelashes. Uh, you, know, you know, ladies, young ladies want their eyelashes to be really, really long. But actually, there's, there's, what's the function of the eyelids? Uh, the, the lashes. The lashes are actually protecting the eye from dust. Uh, you know, uh, how do they protect the eye from the dust? Of course, it's sticking out, so it protects the eye from, from dust and the elements. And at the same time, if ever you touch your, 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 your lashes, the eye automatically closes. That's a reflex of the eye uh, that tells you there's something happening. So it's protecting the eye. So anything that touches the eyelashes or even touches the eyelids, the, the eyelids or the eye automatically closes. So if it closes, it's protecting the eyeball inside because the eyeball is the most important structure of, in this area. These parts outside the eye, the external eye, are just... Uh, parts that actually majority of them protect the eye from danger okay so another thing is that um, if, if like for example some dirt goes in your eye for example there's a dirt that goes in that eyeball like a um, like a metal so it will be irritated and it will start to tear so you will start tearing because of that uh, of that uh, foreign body, but actually it's not because of the black tear duct. It's just because of the foreign body. So, and then if you notice, you blink a lot after you get irritated with the eye with, with, with that uh, foreign body. You blink a lot because the eye is trying to protect itself again. It's trying to get rid of that of that um, foreign body. So you tear a lot, you blink a lot, and finally you don't feel the the eye, the foreign body anymore because the the the, the eyelashes and the eyelids and the tears got rid of the foreign body. But if the foreign body persists, then you have to go to the ophthalmologist, the eye doctor, so that the eye doctor will take out the foreign body. But anyway, nevertheless, this is our external eye, and it is very, you know, this is what we see every day from other people's faces, their, their eyelashes, their, their, their eyebrows, their lids. But these are important structures because without these structures, the eye will not function well. Okay? so. I hope you learned something about the external eye that you don't learn every day from, from school or anything. So anyway, we'll stop from there, okay? And then uh, we'll stop from the external eye. When we come back after the break, we will talk about the internal eye on how the eye works inside the eye. Uh, later, we'll explain about how the, the eye and the camera is similar in, in, in things. So anyway, don't go away. We'll be right back. <music> 